30. Yeah, today's my 30th birthday and I'm also sick, so I lost my voice. And we're heading to the border to take a run of all the stuff we got in the back. I estimate we have approximately $14,000 worth of stuff in the back. That's probably our highest value load. And then we'll take it into Western Ukraine. And this time uh, we might go a little bit further to Chernobyl, which is where we know someone who is taking care of people there. And so we might bring her food or maybe someone else will take this food to her. But it would be cool to see some of the final destination of where what we're bringing in is going to. We're driving our van now. It's full of things. So many people helped us to pack it up. We met uh, people in uh, airport. We didn't meet them personally because we were still stuck at the border coming from Ukraine. So they landed in Warsaw and our American friends from California went and met them. They picked up seven suitcases and the lady who was packing the suitcases in Chicago, she made the list of every possible item that was in the suitcase and she packed it so well. I could not even do better myself. Somebody even drove from Kentucky of our friends who are planning to come a bit later and picked up some really good stuff and brought it to Chicago so that it can make it on the plane and come this past uh, Sunday. So there were like boots, medical kits, cleaning water, filters. Um, we could even find some helmets <laughs> and also thermal clothes. And uh, what else did I find? Oh, one lady that we know, she was looking for some specific needles that you uh, poke your lungs with and Back in Metro in Poland, getting all this meat with Paul from California. Thanks, Paul. Okay, Paul, you gotta sit in the back. Roll into Ukraine. <laughs> <laughs> you good? <laughs> Help! <laughs> <laughs> We've driven by this castle tower here a few times and we decided since it's my birthday, maybe we'll pull over and stop and take a look real quick here. What did you find? A snail at the castle. <laughs> Uvaga. This word is basically the same as in Ukrainian. Okay, so we're back at the border and there's a ton of people with cars here. We're gonna try to skip this whole line because it's like three days long. Okay, we just crossed the border and we are back in Ukraine. The crossing tide was not too bad, maybe two hours, two and a half or three hours or so. And it's a nice day. We gave the border guards a whole box of Snickers and also two things of coffee, which they really like. And they remembered us from last time. And I was going to the back and I was getting the Snickers bar box out. And he said, what are you getting there? And I said, oh, I've got a Snickers box. He said, oh yeah, go over there, up there, that way. So we said, <laughs> they liked it a lot. So it really helps make things go faster. <laughs> means we give them bribe air. It's not a bribe, Arksana. 
It's just a gift for their work it that they're doing. Well, we it's a token very, of appreciation yes, yes, because we, we really do would. we give it to them after they do all the documents, not before. Therefore, it's different, you know. security reasons like basically there's like four guys sitting around with AKs and they've got concrete blocks in the road you know blocking half the road and they've got these big metal things that block the tanks from driving through it's quite a sight actually and those guys there just stand around checking people all day long and so they're a great group of guys who we can always give some stuff to so we gave them a box of Snickers and also a thing of coffee just like this right here and they love it when we give them this stuff and then they remember us and they're like, oh yeah, you guys. And so it helps us get through faster. Okay, we're back to our favorite bridge. Somehow they started redoing it and the right side is new basically, but it's blocked off. I guess they haven't finished it. Okay, this side's horrible and we always bounce through it. Yeah, there's the old bridge. That's no good anymore. Someone's grabbing me a roll of toilet paper for my nose. I bet you moved talk dog. Perfect. Thanks for the toilet paper. I need it. I got an orange and it's, it smells like orange. It smells much better than the ones that you can buy in the store. And we got two oranges and one lemon uh, from the guy who we met at the border. And he was Ukrainian, but he was American. And uh, he, he ran away from the Soviet Union in 1980-something. He never came back. And now he's the pastor in Italy of some Islamic churches. He was driving the humanitarian help the same way as us. So one of the humanitarian help that he had was the Italian uh, oranges and they smell really good so he gave us so we gotta eat them so we're driving along the road here we see all these piles tons and tons of piles see these little piles right here guess what they are let's find out ants ant piles and the name of the organization one of the organizations that we're helping out with is called Ukrainski Morashki which means Ukrainian ants and the idea is the bad guys came to the country and they kicked the ant pile like I just did. And all these little ants here, they found something that they needed to do, something that needed to be done, and they did it. And so this is what all of us people who live in Ukraine are just finding what needs to be done and doing it, like these ants here. So, sorry ants. But for some reason there's tons and tons of ants here in Ukraine, which is true, and therefore we will not be beaten. So watch out. Good piggy. <laughs> Good piggy. Look at his nose. Хорошая свинюшка. Oh, thank you. Good horsey. Smile, Alexander. Okay, so we have arrived at the base. We will unload. Look at all this meat in there. Well. One of the things we brought this time was this thermal vision device. Super interesting. You can see this transformer here is really warm. So 
different modes here. Who's that? Dark. Thermal vision. Okay, привет. Dikto. Там здрасте. Ну, Игорь, да? Да, Игорь. Хорошо. И что это такое? Это большой пауэрбанк. Строительная коробочка, в которой стоит автомобильный аккумулятор от электромашины. Емкость батареи 2 кВт. Если есть все запчасти, тогда 2-3 дня и можно сделать. На протяжении 5 дней для 10-12 человек можно заряжать каждый день свой телефон и рации. Но вообще надо 10, то что мы знаем, где-то 500-700 долларов. В общем, человек, с которым мы в Яворе сотрудничаем, с 24-й бригадой, он спросил, можем ли мы купить маленькие пауэрбанки с солнечной батареей. Пришла идея, я знаю, что Игорь занимается тем, что он делает пауэрбанки, и мы подумали, а давайте мы спросим Игоря, может быть, он сможет сделать большой один пауэрбанк для 12 человек, как у нас друзья есть военные, у них 12 человек группа, чтобы эти 12 человек целую неделю могли заряжать один раз в день каждый свой телефон, то есть это примерно 80 зарядок и плюс надо зарядить еще рации и все такое. Uh -huh. Он сказал, что он подумает, как это сделать и через несколько дней он купил два таких больших тяжелых батарейных блока с электроавтомобиля. Вот и это вот первый прототип, который он собрал. Мы вышлем его военным, они посмотрят, и если оно действительно будет востребовано и это будет не сильно большой бюджет, то мы будем делать такое для военных и, возможно, для тех, кто в подвалах сидят, у которых нет электроэнергии и все такое. Так как мы доставляем прям вперед ребятам, там, где идут, идут бои, и еду, и то, что им нужно с equipment, mm -hmm. мы можем им доставить эту вещь. Мы называемся UANs, in all of information, how you can help and support us, it will be here. So we have dropped off all the military stuff at the hotel. We're driving another three and a half to four hours to one of our friends who is taking care of refugees. And we're taking all the food that we bought in Poland with the help of Paul and Paul, as well as your donations, to this person who's taking care of a bunch of people. So we'll go there and see what it's like and also deliver the food. So yesterday we were looking for gas because we only had half a tank and every gas station that we went to didn't have any. It said like zero zero for all the prices. And one spot that we went to, which was called Avius Plus, and then we said, hey, do you have any diesel? And they said, actually we do. If you buy it through the app here, which I have set up. Okay, so Oksana has purchased fuel through the app. So now we can just go to refuel right here. It says we're not at a station from a distance of 100 meters. So we got to manually select a station. Okay, yeah, we are. Here's our station. Select. What's our call number? Three. Number three. Okay, number three. Waiting to remove the gun. Did you remove the gun? Mm -hmm. Yes, you removed the gun, but our internet is slow. Okay. Well, 15 liters refill. So it should start. Yep, there it goes. Started by itself. Yeah. Very cool. Technology. Through the app, it's more expensive. Ah, we paid more, yeah? yeah paid How much more. did you pay through the app? Yeah, so we paid another 60, 60 grievinos, which was another $2 to fill up like a fifth of a tank. It's only 15 liters. Otherwise, they won't sell it to you. So this gas station has decided if you're willing to pay a premium, they'll give you gas. At other gas stations, there's just no gas at all. So it looks like if you buy gas at the gas station, which you cannot actually do, you need this little talonchiki, which is like a little ration card or ration paper. And every time we ask someone, where do you get these? They're like, I don't know. Or they're like, you got to drive all the way to Uzgrod, which is like two hours away. So I don't actually know how you're supposed to get these gas rations, but somehow that gas station is selling gas through the app more expensive. And even though they're advertising right there on the highway that they have zero diesel, you can actually buy it through the app. That's the way that business works in Ukraine, I guess. Oh yeah, look at those tractors. This is the Welcome to the Carpathian statue, but we're leaving the Carpathians. It's like they actually have gas there next to the mine. No gas in that gas station. Long lines in the gas station. Oksana has been doing some video editing while I'm driving. Good job, Oksana. driven by 
made two or three checkpoints so far and they had not stopped us, but we were just stopped at one checkpoint and they checked everything. They checked my driver's license, our car documents, our passports, my residency permits, and all of Oksana's info. They wanted to see the stamp of what date we left Poland and entered Ukraine. They wanted to see the paper that says that we showed at the border as we brought the stuff across. They asked where this stuff is from exactly, who paid for it, where it's going, what's the name of the organization it's going to, all kinds of stuff. The most thorough uh, check we've had. And also they had us load on our phone. You can see like the IMEI info and the ICC ID, which basically will allow them to track and see where my phone has been. Even if I take my SIM card out and put in a different SIM card, you know, they can keep track of me in the future to see if I actually go to this town that I said that I will go to now. So we just arrived to this town here and we're going to unload the stuff and she's going to show us what they have going on here at the center. Памперси у нас були, ми трошки памперси перенесли в іншу. Тут у нас просто ми видаємо, видаємо. They have these pre-made packages for borscht. Baby food. Консервы. Здесь мы пакуем все продукты наборы. Это Юля. This is tushonka, which is a type of preserved meat. It looks like this is pig here. And this has been difficult to find in Ukraine, so we brought something like, kind of like that from Poland. Let's so write the document saying that they received it or not. I mean, Paul and Paul. This is what you bought. This is what we brought to Oksana. It's so good. Paul, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Так что это наш звит будет. Так, поехали. Come on, Oksana, you can do it. Come on. I'll take all this in one load. Okay, and just like that, we've unloaded a few thousand bucks worth of food. It's going right here to this place in this town. And every day, people come here and ask for food and they give out food. They also uh, cook food in the kitchen. I don't know if we'll have a chance to see that or not. Uh, but for everyone who donated, thank you very much. Це посилочка, яку ми отримали сьогодні, і ми її привезли у самій ранку. Ми отримали 25 наборів, але ми їх розсортовуємо, тому що є люди, яким потрібна сковородка, є люди, яким потрібна тарілка, а є люди, яким потрібна каструля. То в нас є вдома там або щось інше, то ми... я з Солоянчика, ми оказались тут, а со мною ще Юля, мій муж і Юлін муж. 
Руслан, вот. они вместе находятся сейчас в батальоне, служат на да. линии фронта. 25 февраля пришло сообщение, что очень сильно нужны психологи, потому что начали приезжать семьи беженцев. Они ну, очень сильно нуждались в психологической помощи, потому что постраждали от бомбардировок или от оккупации. Русские войска зашли со стороны Беларуси, и вот именно вот, э, Буча, Ирпень, они все бежали сюда. Она начала оказывать психологическую помощь, э, так как это моя не первая война это моя уже третья война и я как бы имею какой-то опыт я начала помогать еще и на волонтерском центре семьям сейчас их у нас уже очень много и мариуполь и суммы и харьков и луганск и донецк и краматорск и буча и ирпень два дня назад цифра была 1789 людей которые проживают на территории нашего города город называется бережаны это тернопольская область мы постоянно ищем откуда мы можем привести еду где мы можем достать еду мы ищем финансов как долго мы сможем это еще делать я не знаю как долго столько сколько люди будут нуждаться в этом люди которые здесь а сейчас остаются процентов наверное 80 которым уже некуда возвращаться домов нет многие не вернутся просто даже из-за того что они видели из-за тех ужасов которые они там видели пока во мне будет здесь нужда я буду здесь находиться я я понимаю что я сейчас не могу уехать мы официально делаем запрос официально потом отчитываемся была проверка когда из СБУ приезжал и проверяла нашу деятельность, и они сказали, что с нами все в порядке. У нас э, живут в школе, у нас живут в двух общежитиях, а остальные люди живут по квартирам, по домам, по селам. Все, что я знаю, что он в Запорожье, а дальше я ничего не знаю, потому что это небезопасно знать. Сегодня я знаю, что он ранен, что он в госпитале, но я очень рада, что он жив. Yesterday, just 12 and a half miles away from the base of the hotel where we were, there was a missile that landed for the first time in Zakarpate Oblast. And I don't know how bad the damage was yet. People sometimes ask us, are you safe over there in Ukraine? And the answer is no, because missiles are landing all over the place. So Western support is very much appreciated. We're taking a different route out of Ukraine towards Slovakia. And this road is not that great in some parts. Some parts it's actually new but it feels almost undiscovered. There's very few people here. The towns are small. There's a good amount of mountains. It just has a different feel to it than the other parts of Ukraine. These guys are getting water from this spring right here. It's not uncommon in Ukraine for people to drink directly from the spring water. Interesting bridge we found here. Products, huh? You scared? No. Okay. What are you waiting for? One of my favorite things to do in Ukraine before the war started was to explore abandoned stuff. Old bridge right next to the new bridge. And old bridges are cool in the US, in Europe, everywhere. But in Ukraine, they're extra cool. there was much much shorter to import cars than it was in Poland. We want to import the, our van here. When we get to that point we need some other documents first then if this border is still shorter than other ones we'll come down here. Schengen zone, hopefully Ukraine will be part of it someday. 